Last week, I made a Bailey's macaron and I immediately realized I needed to make a Coco Bomb version. So today, let me start off with sharing my Bailey's ganache recipe that we are going to put inside this Coco Bomb. I got these little mini bottles of Bailey's, which I loved because I don't drink very much and I only need a little bit. I am using both milk and dark chocolate because I like that flavor combination, as well as some salt, honey, butter, and cream. We want to get that cream on our stove heating up, and depending on if you want this to be a little boozy or not, you can add in the Baileys right away to cook out the alcohol, or you can add it at the end after your cream has come to a scald or very light simmer, depending on if you want that alcohol to remain or not. Either way, you want the cream to be very warm so you can pour it over the chocolates, the honey, and your salt. Once you have that sitting and has a little bit of time to warm everything through, you can give that a really nice stir with a whisk or if you have an immersion blender, that would be great too. After you get the cream incorporated is when you want to add in the butter. This helps cool everything down just a little bit and it will benefit your end result and your ending texture if you add in the butter when this ganache is a little bit cooler instead of it adding everything to the same bowl right away, so keep that in mind. The last thing we have to do for this ganache is to let it cool completely. I like to do this by putting some plastic wrap on a small sheet pan, pouring the ganache over the top, and then covering it again with plastic wrap and leaving it to cool. Spreading the ganache out like this is going to help it cool it down a lot faster. Um, so especially if you're making the cocoa bombs on the same day, you definitely want to use this method. You will know it's ready to use when you can scrape a spoon through the ganache and you leave a perfect trail and you come up with a really smooth, silky spoonful of ganache. Now it is time to move on to the shell of our cocoa bomb. I have some silicone molds, my um, chocolate, I have marshmallows today, some gold sprinkles um, that were just actually white sprinkles that I covered with gold powder, and all of my other tools you might have seen in my last Cocoa Bomb video. Now for this we want to start off with our chocolate. I am using a dark coating chocolate today. I am just very slowly heating this in the microwave about 30 seconds at a time. If you are microwaving and not using a double boiler, this is super important to keep stirring your chocolate or you will end up with a little ball at the center that burns and then all of your chocolate would be ruined. Once everything is melted, it is time to pour the chocolate into your mold. I like to use a piping bag for more control and less mess, so I'm just cutting the tip off here and then I'll fill my molds about a third to half the way.
Once the chocolate is completely in the molds, you can use either a small offset spatula or the back of a spoon or I guess whatever you have handy to pull the chocolate from the bottom of the mold up the sides. You want to make sure that everything that you're pulling up the sides of the mold is relatively thick. You don't want any holes or gaps or really thin parts. So you may even want to go back and do this a second time if you notice any little gaps or anything like that. I then like to turn the mold upside down on a bit of parchment paper so that any excess chocolate will fall out and then we can reuse that again later. This also helps so we have a thin, smooth shell around the entire hemisphere and you don't end up with a huge glob of chocolate that's just you know, sunk into the middle at the bottom there. I do like to use my bench scraper that you could use an offset spatula or whatever just to clean up the edges before I let this sit and dry. Depending on what kind of chocolate you use, how warm your kitchen is, how much time you have, um, you can quick pop these into the refrigerator or you can just leave them to cool at room temperature. carefully pop these out of the molds. This is definitely the most challenging part of this whole thing. Just make sure that you pull the silicon mold away from the edge before you do any sort of pushing from the bottom. I like to use a blowtorch on the back of my metal bench scraper to clean up the edges before I add any of my filling. If you don't have these tools, you can certainly heat the bottom of a frying pan or a metal sheet pan or something like that and then take it off the stove and use that heated metal surface to do the same sort of thing. Or if you don't mind, if your edges are a little bumpy, you also could technically skip this step. After the edges are nice and clean, it is time to go ahead and fill our cocoa bomb. I have my ganache in a piping bag, my marshmallows and sprinkles at the ready. And I'm going to start by adding a nice big dollop of the Bailey's ganache in the bottom. And then I will press the marshmallows right inside there in the one half of my sphere and then I will heat the other side to seal everything together. After sealing the cocoa bomb, I am drizzling some additional uh, coating chocolate, the same chocolate I used for the bomb itself. And then immediately I'm adding my gold dusted sprinkles on the top. If you are doing a bunch of bombs in a row, make sure that you are working quite quickly or that every couple of bombs you stop to sprinkle so that that chocolate, the drizzled chocolate doesn't harden before you add the sprinkles. Once you are ready to make your hot cocoa, make sure you find a cup that is big enough to fit the entire sphere inside of it. The next thing you want is really, really warm milk or a milk alternative, and then go ahead and watch the magic happen.
because we used a ganache inside and not a cocoa powder, make sure that you stir really, really well so that all of that beautiful, luscious ganache gets mixed into your warm milk and it becomes the hot cocoa consistency that you know and love and you don't end up with a ton of chocolate just sitting unfortunately at the bottom. I hope you guys loved this take on cocoa bombs. I know they are everywhere but I really love this Bailey's version and I wanted to give you my recipe in case you wanted to try it out at home. If you do give it a try, let me know what you think down in the comments. And as I mentioned, I did use this exact ganache for some macarons, so feel free to try that as well. See you next time.